Hey everybody, welcome back to the 10th floor. It's me, Matt. Hi everybody, it's Kat. And you're here, you're on the 10th floor. Or you're on the elevator, or you're in the waiting room. Get out of the waiting room. Get into the elevator. We're going to go all the way up to the 10th floor because General Hospital happened this week. And we're going to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> There was five brand new episodes of GH on ABC this week, mm -hmm. full of love, betrayal, adventure, memories, Christmas trees, text messages, pictures, goodbyes, hellos, mm -hmm. flowers, meetings, deceit, mm -hmm. malpractice, trial practice. <laughs> Yeah, now practice <laughs> trial practice. That was pretty smart of <laughs> Uh bets. You know. <laughs> I bet you I can break thin in 15 minutes. I'll bet you can't. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but before we get into the plot of the show, yeah. We gotta talk about the controversies backstage. And 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 our good news too. Oh, and our good news. All right, we'll start with the good news before we start whining and complaining. How okay. About How about that, okay. mother? You like that yeah. idea? I like that idea. All right, folks. No 30-minute countdown. We're just getting into it. Mm -hmm. Because we don't have time. No. They didn't give us time. No. So we don't have time to play around. No. Because we have to make sure we have a camera and a microphone and a nice dress and heels uh -huh. and, and sequins and sparkles and a blazer yeah. and well-fitting pants. Yes. Because we're going to be on the red carpet, folks. We sure are. We're going to be on the daytime Emmys red carpet. We are on the daytime Emmys. Oh, my gosh, you guys. You better watch our channel. You better you better see what's... We don't know what's coming, but we're bringing it. We're bringing it. Now, I don't think we're going to be able to bring it live, but we're bringing it. Yes. You know, I mean, you just pay attention. Maybe we can do a Facebook live in between things, but like the interviews and stuff, it could be difficult to do with live. But... But yeah, we're 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 gonna be there. We're gonna be on the red carpet. We're gonna be there with the rest of the soap press, soap opera news, soap hub, Michael Farriman, James Lott Jr. All of them lined up there along with the tenth floor podcast. Yes, as we, we will are. say, Laura, Laura Wright, over here, you're stunning. What are you wearing, Laura? And if she likes us, she'll come talk to us. Hey, Mo, Mo, hey, how's your state of mind? Get on over here. Maurice, let's talk about depression. Huh? <laughs> huh? So, yeah, we're going to What do you here. guys think? Should we try any of those or something? <laughs> yeah, let us know. Is that, is that good? <laughs> what you wearing? Let's talk about sadness. Like, come on. <laughs> so, we're going to do it. We're going to be there. Um, <laughs> uh, Chandra says, congratulations. Moving on, on up like George and Wheezy. Aww. Uh, well, honestly, honestly, Chandra, we can't believe it. It's pretty exciting because we, we tried last year and they were like, nah. Yeah, we're like, oh, and we okay. tried this year and they're like, all right. Yes. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's super exciting. I'm, I'm very excited to be able to do it, to bring this content to you. And, uh, you know, I mean, it, it's for it's for you. I mean, I, okay, so we're going to put daytime Emmys on the thing. The videos are going to have a lot of views. Blah, 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 and they're going to get the content. Cool. But we're not doing it for them necessarily. No. We're doing it for you guys. Yep. You're the ones that have been here. You're the ones yeah. that want to come every week and talk to us, or at least listen to us talk and participate in the chat if you so choose to. Mm -hmm. So heck yeah, folks. So as, yeah. Soon as, so, so as soon as I get done here with you guys and with Matt, I'm gonna go meet my daughter uh, at a, and and we're gonna go looking for me a dress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm just so excited. <sighs> I feel like I'm looking for my prom dress all over again. <laughs> <laughs> gotta pick the right one. It's gotta be the right shade of pink. You gonna wear pink? I'm looking. I'm, I'm trying. I'm, I'm looking for black, actually. Black, yeah, classic, right? Classic, classic, classic. So yeah, that, that, wear black. that's what we're doing this week, so this week, folks. So, uh, yay! I'll be yay. driving from NorCal to SoCal on Thursday. Mm-hmm. And we're gonna get it all happening for y'all on Friday. Mm-hmm. Buy those comfy shoes, Mama Cat. Well, I, I was thinking about that actually. <laughs> I do have to have some comfortable shoes, so I'm thinking about. Bringing two shoes, I'm gonna I'm gonna go buy myself some 
little sparkly flats are cute. And then I'm pro and I can't, okay. The years of me wearing some like heel heels, those are pecs. That ain't happening for me. I'm not, I'm not going to kill myself like that. No way. No. no. Anyway, but so what I think I am going to buy is like, me and you know, some little kitten heels or something. Heck yeah. For the live, the live red carpet. The daytime Emmy's red carpet. Yeah. Mm. And then, you know, when and, and when it's not actually uh, gar carpet time, I will have the flats on. And then I'll have the other ones kind of behind me, you know. And but I'll when be, it's time to, to, to show that calf and hike up that heel, you got it. And I got, you got, you, I got my and I got my Emmy nails already, you guys. Oh look. my gosh, you got her Emmy look. nails already. Yes, they yes, look yes. like they're red and they look like they've been dipped in diamonds. I love it. So uh, Jeannie wants to know if we're going to be able to get inside the show as well. And the answer to that is no, we're not going to be able to get inside of the show. The reason why it works out that way is because we are pressed for the red carpet for entry and also for exit. Ooh. So when they're all coming in, you know, oh, hey, hey, looky here, click, click, click. Pictures, mm -hmm. pictures, pictures, video, 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 having a great time. They go in, the ceremony starts, and then it becomes winner's walk. So the winners will then come outside to the red carpet once more to have subsequent interviews off of their Emmy win, to get the pictures, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to be pressed the entire time. We just don't have the moments to sit and actually watch the ceremony to then be oh. able to get potentially... Um, winner reaction right and i you know that was news to me i didn't know about uh the post walk of the winners right i didn't know that happened yeah until recently yeah 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 well cool. because um when you apply there's different things because you know there's like four days of emmys you know this is the daytime full thing but then they have like the children and arts emmys and then the you know the the, the tech Emmys and the online Emmys and all that kind of stuff, which is all happening that weekend. So we got to pick and choose and select which ones that we might have wanted to try. Of course, I clicked everything. But they're like <laughs> regular Emmys, red carpet, and a winner's walk. So boom, that's what we got. That's what we got. What and we, we got. are so, so yeah. thrilled. And when I when when Matt first told me, hey Ma, you guys, I, I was like, I had I was excited and you know I and I rarely have like a physical response to things, really, you know, like I'm not one to really get all that nervous, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm just not like that that much. I don't have a physical response that much. But when he told me that I did, I got like a sense of panic, actually. Like, well, we're not ready. It's only in nine days. <laughs> we're so ready. We're so ready. <laughs> but we're, we're getting we're getting more ready every hour that goes yeah, we just got to, you know, write some stuff down, make sure that we're familiar with it. And plus, it's also going to be live broadcast online and I think also on one of the, the channels or something. I don't know exactly what it's getting set up there. So uh, while we won't be in the ceremony itself, we'll still be able to watch the ceremony and we'll be able to see the speeches and accepted speeches and all that kind of stuff before they come out into the winner's walk. So we should be fully informed of everything that's going on. We're not really missing anything. We're just not going to be inside the building to watch the actual ceremony, but that's okay because I would much rather be outside and get, be able to catch those interviews. Yeah, me too. It's not like sharing videos of an acceptance speech on Twitter is going to do anything because people can watch it already. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, the, and, and the Emmys are going to be broadcast yeah. on CBS. Yeah, and I think so. Live, live, if you're in LA. On Take delay. delay. Take delayed if you're on the West Coast, right? Right. right. I, I, it starts I, I at nine o'clock. Yeah. So it's going to be live for the East Coasters, uh, pre, -pre tape delay for the West Coasters. Um, I, I, I listen, I, they're definitely streaming it online. Um, I guess it's also going to be, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on TV Friday night. <laughs> well, I know it is going to be on CBS at 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. And then where do, where do you watch the red carpet? I don't know. 10th floor. Really? Everywhere, I guess. There's really and no, it's, it's not like the Oscars where they have like Joan Rivers and a special e-entertainment television red carpet special spectacular. So I don't really think unless, unless, unless one of your favorite soap outlets is doing a live stream of what they're up to, you're probably not going to get a special some red carpet red stuff. Carpet. Always is. May, maybe. Maybe. I mean, CBS itself should be doing it. Again, <laughs> this is not the Oscars. Uh, they haven't really cared about a presentation of the daytime Emmys in ages. 
well, there was even a little, there was a little block of time where they weren't even on and it yeah. wasn't even COVID related. Right. It, they just weren't broadcasting it. It was only they online exclusive. And if you take a look at like the set and the setup and the expense and the size of the venue and stuff for the daytime Emmys for years ago versus now, it's very, very different. Yeah. Because now it's just circular tables and kind of a dark room and you just go up onto the stage behind the podium and say thank you. But before they had set pieces and this, that, and the other stuff, and it was a whole what to do, which really isn't the case anymore. Yeah, back in the day when there was a lot of budget for soap operas and there was, you know, 12, 13 of them on the air. Mm -hmm. But now, not so much. Yeah, uh, so, not... We'll, so we'll see. We'll see. Uh, again, we're, we're going to get there. We're going to be on the red carpet of the daytime Emmys on Friday, and we're going to do our very best to make it super special for you guys. Yes, 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 Joe. Yes. yes. So, yeah, and follow Cheryl's um, Cheryl's advice here. And since we have given you this awesome information about us being live on the red carpet this Friday at the Daytime Emmys, hit that like and subscribe button. <laughs> yes, please. And thank you. <laughs> yes. All right. So beyond that, controversies. Okay, very quick. Very, very, very quick. Very quick. Mm -hmm. uh, this week, Joe Love, uh, who plays Violet Cassidy. Mm -hmm. Cassidy. <laughs> hmm? uh, is she Barnes? She's not a Barnes. She's a Cassidy, right? Yeah, she's Cassidy. She's Cassidy. She's Cassidy. So Violet Cassidy. Mm -hmm. She's not a Cassidy. She's a, she's a freaking Finn. Oh, see, I got my babies mixed up. I don't no. know nothing about nobody. You leave me alone when it comes to who belongs to what family. Uh, so Violet no, Finn. She's a, she's a Chase. She's a Chase? She's a Violet Chase? Is she, okay, chat, give us Violet's last name, please. Is it Finn? Is it Chase? Is it Barnes? I think it was Barnes. It, even if it was Barnes, he should have taken her to court to have that taken off. She a <laughs> beat, deadbeat mother. That yeah. Hayden Barnes. Uh, <laughs> Melissa wants to know if Joe Love got a DUI, and the answer is no. No, no, no DUI for her. Uh, what she did, what she wrote a song. <laughs> she wrote a song, and she went to Frank Valentini and said, "Hey, Frank Valentini, I wrote this song. Do you think that you might be able to make a scene in which Violet sings this song?" And Frank Valentini looked at the song and he read the song and he thought about it and said, yeah, I can do that for you. Mm -hmm. And so he had it. So they wrote a song, uh, wrote a scene where Violet has a chance to sing this song. Mm -hmm. And it, it was, was very cute. It was cute. It was charming. It was beautiful. People, people, some people liked it. Other people think Violet is a waste of space. But there is a small but very local, vocal uh, group out there. Who have just decided that Joe Fia Love herself is Satan for asking for and getting an opportunity to sing on the show? William Lipton can do it all he wants. Mm -hmm. Wally Kurth can do it all he wants. Mm -hmm. Josh Swickard can do it all he wants. Mm -hmm. But as soon as Finn's child. Mm -hmm. Gets what she wants. There is a epic meltdown. Why? I don't get it. <laughs> I don't know either. I, I don't. I don't get it either. But um. But uh. Some of the reaction out there has just been kind of unfortunate and sad. And I. I just. Uh. The reason why I bring it up is because it's. There's no room for it here on the tenth floor. You can hate Violet all you want. You can think that Violet is annoying. You think that Violet is on too much. But as soon as you say Jophiel Love has too much stroke backstage and Ken Schreiner should have more. You've crossed a line. She's F and eight, you guys. She's eight. She yeah. wrote a song. And what we're completely ignoring and eliminating from this is the fact that she wrote that song. Which wasn't, I love Santa, reindeers are cool. <laughs> you know, this eight-year-old wrote that song. And instead of saying, what talent? Holy smokes. What a great thing Frank Valentini and this show did to encourage this eight-year-old to continue this creative path. Because what else, what is the other answer? Hey, Frank, I wrote this song. You think you could do a scene for it? No. Mm -hmm. That's not encouraging. No. Plus, it was, it was a cute little song. That's stifling. It was a cute little song. I thought it was adorable, and Jophia, you could tell that little JoJo she loved, loved it. doing it. You could, <laughs> and you could tell that she had did some rehearsal for it too. She was, she was trying, she was trying to bring it, and she did. Mm -hmm. I loved it. <laughs>
Uh, if Frank Valentini is investing in the talents and the dreams of a child, he's being a good human, is what Melissa says to that. And I agree entirely. I agree entirely. Yeah. Chandra, however, Chandra says, and this is fun, she says, and the people who were critical had tons of typos in their tweets. Couldn't even spell. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Her writing is good. Her voice, no. She's eight. She's eight, and she, she still has that really, like, young voice to her. Like, her voice hasn't matured into an older yes. child yet. Yes. So. You know, at eight years old, you don't know if you're a soprano or all the alto yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Again, <laughs> Melissa, with the wisdom, uh, it cost Frank nothing to do this and met the world to Joe Fiel. Boom. Absolutely. Boom. And folks, she's eight. She asked for it and got it. Uh, I don't know what you haven't gotten in your life that makes you so jealous, but let it go. Second controversy. Uh, Josh Swigard and Amanda Seton went on a zoom i don't know when this was i feel like it was weeks ago um but they went it was uh and then and then you know how it happens so they go on a zoom and they have a thing and then a couple of weeks later a soap uh, outlet will write an article on it say mm -hmm. something that they had said mm -hmm. which just goes to show that people are really aren't watching the podcast <laughs> 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 or the zooms and all that kind of know um or what they say on the zooms and in the podcasts aren't really that big of a deal to the people who are watching these things and only a big deal to the people who are not watching these things Okay. You know, like all the people who have had negative things to say about the 10th floor don't watch us. I don't know what people say negative things they say about the 10th floor. It's fine. It's I think really it's, not that I too think, serious. I, 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 sometimes ignorance is bliss, y'all. It's mostly about me being a white guy. Oh, well. How, <laughs> damn, how dare you, damn it, Matthew? Yeah, I know. Daisy fast forward singing. It's cool. Daisy fast forward <laughs> as much as you want. You can hate the song. You can hate Violet. You can hate all that. Just don't hate Joe Fiel for getting what she wants. That's all. That's all I ask. Yeah. That's all I ask. Uh, but um, so they went on, on Zoom and they both said, hey, you know, we're, we're married. We got young kids at home. We're not especially interested in bumping our pretend uglies on the show. Both of them are not. Mm -hmm. Both of them have said, we are not interested in doing those scenes. Right. Josh Wickard think... has been ignored in this and has gotten no flack. Amanda Seton, apparently, must take her shirt off or she does not deserve to have a show. But, you know, you, you, and it's not that it's not that they don't want to show any affection on the show. Yes, they they're yeah, they're going to be a little cutesy. They're going to be flirty. You're going to get their kisses and, and all. And you'll probably even get them sitting up in bed next to each other in afterglow. Maybe not. And that but, seems to be the thing that that is really triggering people. But they don't want to be like, you know. They don't want to have, they don't want to be under the sheets where you see the four feet. And that, they don't want that soap opera scene. No, no. So, you know, the, the, right? the, the Joss Dex thing. They don't want that. They don't um, want that. They, 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 don't, they, they don't want to do that. They don't find it appropriate for their real lives, our -E EAL lives, even though it's affecting, right. quote unquote, the, our EEL lives. And so there's a lot of opinion out there that's saying, well, it is expected of a soap actress to put herself in these situations. It is essentially a requirement of somebody to take their shirt off at 2 p.m. on ABC in order to have this job. Which I think is Ridiculous. very wrong. Very, very wrong. Now, you can think yeah, that I'm evil for thinking that. Go ahead. You can think that I am trying to police people's thoughts for, say, for thinking that. Go ahead. You can think that I am a conservative, stick-in-the-mud Christian who thinks that people just need to be celibate. Think that. Because I'm not. <laughs> uh, you know? Think whatever you want to think about me over that, but you are never, ever going to get me to say you must be in your underwear to be on a show, soap opera. No, of course not. No. Yeah. No. And to make Man, that a requirement a... is wrong. Man, if you don't want the side boob, then you shouldn't have to show the side you boob. You shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to. And you also shouldn't be limited from being on daytime television because you are not interested in doing that. You know, we have exactly. plenty of yeah. other uh, couples on the show that are willing to do that. Sure. We even have Ned and Livia, you know, in the, in the, under the sheet. We just did it three times. Glow. Yes. We get it all over the place. Mm -hmm. But you know what, Ma? You know what? Mm. Steve Burton don't want to take his shirt off, and so he doesn't. 
When was the last time Steve Burton had a shirt seen, off on the show? I have no, I've seen, I haven't seen Steve Burton absolutely shirtless in a very long time on TV. Now you might see him, you might see him in like in a little rib tea once in a while. Yeah, yeah. But when it comes well, to you see Steve Burton in a rib tea, but typically you see him in that black t-shirt. And you see him in the black t-shirt. That rib tea is going to be because of some sort of action scene, some sort of fight, some sort of some sort of thing. It's not because of sex right which really I seems to be might, the thing was he in a rib tea when the mountain when the when the when the rocks got landed no, on no he wasn't he was totally perfectly clothed he has black t-shirts steve takes his <laughs> shirt off in his stories he takes his shirt off in his stories that is his he's completely in 100 percent control of when that goes up when that comes down what it is that is being filmed when why or how and he mm -hmm. also takes his shirt off because of athletics, because of fitness, because he is working out, not because he is making out with somebody and simulating love. Now, yeah. is it an actor's job to play these scenes? Sure, if it's written for them. Is it an actor's job to do this if they're told to? Sure, if that's okay with them. Mm -hmm. But we are, I will never, me personally, Ma, you can think whatever you want, but I'm going to say for the 10th floor channel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to be in a situation where I think that it is required for somebody to be put in a position that they are uncomfortable in. I agree. If it doesn't work for the show, they could have cast somebody else. And, and, and um, you know, and that's different for everybody. You know, some people would be perfectly happy to, you know, if let's say there was no limitations on what you could put on television. Well, they'd be willing to do a lot more than that. But that's yeah. their choice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's completely their choice. And if, and if an actor and the, and the showrunners come up with a deal where, mm -hmm. hey, I don't want to do that. Okay, we won't write it for you. Then that is their thing that mm -hmm. they are doing and has absolutely no impact on us. And like I said, I think, I think they can really um, show the level of commitment in the relationship without it actually having those things you i mean we can just assume that they're doing it yeah they can both walk out of the bedroom at the same time fully clothed they could you know <laughs> uh lola wants to be able to block people from watching the show and i'm kind of for that <laughs> <laughs> uh genie says that three couples on days hit the sheets this week boom you got it wherever you want why does amanda set and have to do it yeah, actually, if you want to see, if you want to see some afterglow and some lovey-dovey, mm -hmm. boy, days in our lives bring that. <laughs> they do. Quite a bit. Cinda says most of the women on GH show their cleavage on a normal daily basis. That's their choice. Yes. And awesome. If you want to see that, if you, if, if boobs on your daytime is a requirement for you to enjoy a soap, you're still getting them. They're just not Amanda's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's just, it's also um, pretty unfortunate how much attention is being put onto Amanda Seton specifically over her unwillingness to do this. And mm -hmm. Josh Swickert is majorly getting a pass. Why is it that the woman has to and the man is fine? Well, that's only the tippity top, top, tippity top of an iceberg of all that kind of BS in <laughs> yes. our world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and it's gotten God. better, but it ain't better, better. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeannie says with COVID, it all but stopped love scenes. It's true. We really haven't turned the heat back up. Also, at the same time, I think it's important to remember that when soaps were the steamiest, it was like the 90s when everything was kind of extreme. You know? Oh, yeah. Like, like, yeah, every, like yeah, yeah. Love 80, in the afternoon. Like, but and like just the just entertainment culture was just so big. It was so extreme. You know, everything was about extremeness and something, something 2000. And uh, action heroes were, were Arnold and Sylvester Stallone and all that. Now action heroes are not them. You know, like tastes and, and, and looks and all that kind of stuff has just completely changed over the last well, no 40 are all years. Arnold's 70 and 80 years old now. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not just saying that they need to continue, but like that look of like the super beefed up yeah. steroid Stallone being the action here is not the requirement anymore. You got Tom Holland who played Spider-Man in the Marvel movies running mm -hmm. around in, in other movies with, with, with the guns and the action and the adventure and all that kind of stuff. And he's he's five foot nothing and weighs 175, you know? Mm -hmm. 
It so, has changed. It, just things have changed when it comes to like the extremeness. And I think that's what people are used to. Like seeing Sonny being like, leave your shoes on. All that kind of stuff, which just isn't the speed anymore. Plus, also, I don't know if everybody remembers this thing that happened at the Super Bowl with Justin Timberlake and um, Janet Jackson, Jackson, which oh my gosh, reverted big, yeah. television standards back 25 years. So, <laughs> oh, oh, let's see. Please, my grandma told me decades ago I couldn't watch that smut, but watched it every day. I was staying. And I'm not saying that there's no room for it on soaps. I'm not saying that it shouldn't be on soaps or anything like that. The only thing that I've ever said is that we shouldn't force somebody to do something they're uncomfortable with. That's you, that is the thing. I tell I tell you a little story from uh, that my mother-in-law told me. My mother-in-law is 88 years old, and she's telling me a story about her own mother. So this is Matthew's great grandmother. So she is a. <laughs> She was extremely, you know, a, a Southern belle, an extremely conservative lady, conservative, mm -hmm. you know, and for a long time, and of course, she didn't have television. Well, when, when soap operas started and they were on television, my mother-in-law said there was an hour of the day that you could not even speak to her mom because her story was on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and honestly, it didn't really match really because, because there was steamy things on tv and stuff that she would have never approved of but in that hour of the day it was all cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and again that this isn't part. you know this isn't and that two-dimensional screen she was watching and this isn't me you know trying to hop on the conservative bandwagon of wearing a turtleneck that's really yeah. not the case it is specifically about what an actor is comfortable doing and what works for the show if it didn't work for Frank Valentini, the writers and the producers, for Brooklyn Quartermain to not undress and have these love scenes with Chase, then they would have gone a different direction with who they have playing the character. It's not like they didn't have an opportunity before to switch her out permanently, because they did. Oh yeah, when she left to have her baby? Yeah, she could have. they could have easily, at the end of the contract, said, thank you so much for your time, we're bringing Brianna Lane back in. Mm -hmm. Easily, but they didn't. But they didn't. So uh, it, it's all about in this post Me Too world, saying that an actor must, in order to have the job, it's just it just doesn't fly for me. But that doesn't mean it that doesn't there's not room for it on sense. soaps. That doesn't mean that there shouldn't be love in the afternoon. That doesn't mean that there shouldn't be depictions of passionate physical love between characters, male, female, male, male, female, female. It doesn't matter. That doesn't mean that they shouldn't they this is part of life this is part of romance this is part of love mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that love and romance and physical expressions of it means the same thing in the same ways to everybody who's participating in them that's all that's yeah. all nipples are literally made for kids says melissa it's basically the poor spout of a milk jug grow up sensors it's really not the sensors in this case but i know what you're talking about you're talking about janet jackson and justin timberlake reverting things back 25 years um mm -hmm. that's all that's all that's all i gotta say about it really um you can you can find the crazy arguments on twitter i suppose if you wanted i didn't even look for that nonsense but you know i mean whatever i just it just i felt like i needed to say something because it was nothing it was it was all day yesterday it was was jovial love is the devil and um fire amanda Seton because she's not willing to take her shirt off for my pleasure like that's what that's what it, that's the gist of it yeah she's not willing that's to take her shirt off for my enjoyment fire her really <laughs> <laughs> Well, at the same time, though, we know, we know that there's a very, 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 very small cross section of people that feel that way. Because the folks that don't feel like that aren't saying anything. Exactly. Exactly. So, like, no, no, it no. is no, it's it's a Twitter soap controversy. This isn't a soap right. opera controversy. This no, is what people are saying all. on social media about it. And the ones that take to social media are more likely to highlight the things that they absolutely hate rather than celebrate the things that they enjoy. Mm -hmm. uh, Chandra brings up a very interesting question as well, which I think is deserving of analysis as well. Maybe not right now, but it's deserving of the thought. Mm -hmm. How would people react to a Terry and Yuri love scene? 
There's some people that wouldn't like it. There are some people that would <laughs> boycott the fuck out of the show. Yeah. Where are the calls for Terry to take her shirt off? Terry has never had a love scene. She's in yeah. a romance in a relationship. Why bother putting her in a romance if they're not going to do these scenes? They say about BLQ. Mm -hmm. well, why bother putting Terry in a romance if they're not going to do those scenes? Yeah. They're not thinking that broadly. They aren't. They aren't. They just they do. They just got pissed off because an actor said, "No, I don't want to do that." And yeah. um, what James Light Jr. said on his channel, and I think he's absolutely correct. So go and take a look at what he he put up an eight minute video about it. Uh, mm -hmm. But he said, um, "Anytime an audience finds out that an actor is getting, not even." He called it preferential treatment, but it's not really preferential treatment. It's just listening to what an actor wants to do. But when the audience, when members of the audience hear that an actor is asked for and got, they are always mad about it. Joe Feel asked for and got pissed. Mm -hmm. Amanda asked for and got clothes pissed. But mm -hmm. if this stuff never came out, they would never be pissed. Absolutely. Isn't it dumb? Yes, and it's just <laughs> weird human nature to a certain degree. <laughs> uh, unless Terry gets more screen time in the story, then it would just feel like exploitation, says Melissa. Yeah, I, I, I get that. I get right. that. I, I totally get that. Um, I'm mm -hmm. just, but for example, you know, if they do get more time and all that kind of stuff and it does heat up, then they have a whole new controversy to deal with, which is a transgender depiction of love. Mm -hmm. Physical expression of said love. Right. So, anyway, that's it. We can talk about the show now. Okay, let's talk about the show now. <laughs> we can talk about the show now, because, my God, we're going to be the red carpet enemies. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be wonderful, because yeah. we're going to run into people like the quarter bands. I know. And you know what I'm excited about, too? I'm excited about, you know, some of the folks that I've watched on television that aren't involved in soaps. I mm -hmm. can't wait for Mark and Kelly to walk by me. I oh, know, right? God. Yeah, the game show hosts, talk show hosts, all that kind of stuff. They're all going to be there. I mean, we're focused on soaps here on the 10th floor, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to be able to talk to Kelly Ripa. doesn't mean that, that so-and-so from such and such isn't going to stop yeah, and have yeah. a little chit-chat with us. And we'll, we'll muddle through, we'll ask those questions, and we'll make it happen best we can. Kelly and Mark come over there, we're going to talk to them about being Haley and Mateo. <laughs> It's going to be so fun. It's going to be so fun. <laughs> uh, but on the show, on the show, I mean, I've got a number of, 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 of lists of notes here for us to talk about things. Okay. All right. Uh, Brendan is the leader of the WSB and also seems to be Pikeman. It appears to be maybe, huh? Because like they said, they're very intertwined. The WSB and Pikeman seem to be very intertwined. Yeah. With lots of people working for both Play at yeah, what yeah. are the, what the characters? Times. I think it was Valentine or, or Dante or somebody. Somebody had noticed that mm -hmm. there is a big connection between people who worked for the WSB and who have also worked for Pikeman. It seems to be mm -hmm. kind of a, I don't know. And it seemed to be a lot WSB go to Pikeman. Right, right. So it's like a, the, the, the civilian contractor for the government agency that is the WSB. Yes. Which is yes. what this World Security Bureau, WSB or something like that. Something like that. <laughs> Matt, can I wear a GoPro? Hmm, interesting. Just on my forehead. Just like, hey, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, if not, Pike so, Venom, yeah. Like and you know, and, and, uh, what, what's he looking at, Carly? What? And the flowers seem weird. So he's, he's trying to, he's, what, I think he's trying to, to warm up to Carly so he can position himself near his targets. Absolutely. It's not like, oh, that, 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 the owner of Kelly's, that blonde mm -hmm. owner of Kelly's is sure fine. I sure love her BLTs. No, that doesn't seem to be his agenda. Nope. And he uh, seems to have sent Drew to Australia to give him plenty of time. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, well, no, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not, met, I'm not looking forward to them making uh, Carly stupid. So she's into it. <laughs> maybe she'll Usually. be stupid. Well, I mean, maybe I mean maybe he's just gonna be so good. So what what they've done here is they've they've cast such a good actor for this role. Mm -hmm. You know, like I remember him very well from Desperate Housewives. Mm -hmm. He got Mike Delfino killed. Uh, he did. Spoiler alert. <laughs> um, 
So I, I do remember him well. I remember enjoying him on that show. Uh, I think I've seen him in other things. You know, I can't recall what it is, but he's one of those yeah. actors where you're like, I've seen you, I've seen you, I've seen you, right? Yes, exactly. You know, um, and so, you know, he can bring it. Um, also, when it comes down to it, um, I don't get the immediate short-term villain feeling from him. Mm -hmm. You know how, like, Esme came in and she could have easily been a short-term villain. Just did that six right. months and fell off the parapet and died, you know? Mm -hmm. Um shiloh was a short-term villain cassandra pierce short-term villain you know you can kind of tell you know who's going to come in to come in and make that impact and then leave like adam adam's coming in to make an impact and he's going to go away until they figure out what's going on with him again mm -hmm. right yeah. um i don't get that feeling from 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 brennan i think he's gonna be around yeah and but this... look, adam's not a villain though no, but he's, he's the, but I'm just saying like uh, the impact yeah. for story, like, impact for story, right. right? you know, coming in, just doing their impact, having their story, helping the character, the, the lead character that's regularly on the show, explore yeah. their reaction to something, develop them in some way, da -da 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 -da, and then they go off their merry way until the show can figure out something else to do, if anything. Yes. So I don't get that feeling from Brennan. I really get a, like a, like a Victor Cassidyne at least length of time. And he was on for like two years. Yeah. So you think he's going to be. A new, very strong villain. Yes, I do. And I think this is going to present an interesting of... opportunity for them to really figure out what they're doing with Cyrus. Sure. Because, if, because if Brendan comes in and takes over that lead antagonist role, that mm -hmm. umbrella antagonist, which is definitely the case. He's mm -hmm. touched a lot of characters. Mm -hmm. uh, that opens up um, things with Cyrus. Cyrus can either work against him, work with him. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping for against him because I just want to see a little bit of goodness from Cyrus. But that's just do you, me. do you really want to see the do you really want to see him completely redeemed? No, I want to see him as Hannibal Lecter. Okay. I desperately want to see him as Hannibal Lecter. Mm-hmm. Now, he's not good, but he used his powers for good sometimes. Like he used his powers to help Clarice. They had a Ultimately, show. it was for him to escape. There's a show on Peacock right now. Mm -hmm. It's called. Anyway, it is kind of a Hannibal Lecter kind of story because this lady, she's an investigator and stuff. It's and called she got Found. In, yeah, she got that dude in the in the in the cellar or something, right? Mm -hmm. Same sort of thing. Yes. Yeah. Have yeah. you watched that show, man? I I, I I watched I watched all but I watched like almost the entire pilot. Okay. But wasn't able to finish the pilot because the person that I was watching the show with was not having a good time. Oh. It's well, very it challenging. Own. But you can watch it on your own if you wanted to. If I wanted to. Yeah. But I got all kinds of other stuff to watch on my own. <laughs> well, the, the lead on that is the same actress that was Veronica on Shameless. Oh. So okay. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Uh, yeah, I didn't really watch much of Shameless, but I did. I did try to watch that first episode. I found um, there's a particular artistic level that something must achieve uh, for us to be able to watch it all the way through in tandem. Okay. So didn't hit the mark, <laughs> but that's all right. Okay. I'll give it a shit. Mark Paul Gosler is cool. I remember him, Zach Morris. Yeah. But I just, I like that idea, I, you know, and then over time, yeah, yeah, over time, over 20 years, sure, we can get to some sort of redemption. Uh, but I don't necessarily need to have him be like, I'm a man of Christ now, and Father Reverend Cyrus Uncle Ponytail, who can <laughs> only do good. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't need that. I don't need that. Uh, but to be able to I, help. I want, Cy I want Cyrus to be good, but I always want him to have that capability. And reaching into his sack of crap, if needed. <laughs> Hello, please. <laughs> yeah. Like a bad Santa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm with it. <laughs> Pikeman has to know, as Cheryl says, Pikeman has to know that Carly is Sonny's ex. Well, he's Britain, not quite Pikeman. But definitely, there's no way he doesn't. There's no way <laughs> that him going to Kelly's and having that conversation and being like, oh, you're such a good person for not kicking that homeless guy out and here's the flowers and the da 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 and then the, and the oopsie doodles, you're actually in a relationship, my bad, wink, wink. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all planned. It's all Absolutely. Planned. Absolutely. You know, as, and especially like a man, uh, a, a person that looked like he does, he's not, if, if he's just co coming into Port Charles for a meal and this and that, he's not going to be over there at Kelly's more than one. Yeah. He's going to be at the 
piece he's going to be at the metroport or he's going to be at the you know the new grill place they have they recently have a set for that where cyrus works so you know he would have been in one of those establishments not necessarily the local greasy spoon owned by a local family that probably wouldn't be where he would be Hey, Kaiwan. Welcome to the show. Kaiwan Kaiwan says that uh, they're going to give Cyrus a daughter real soon on the show. Interesting. A daughter? I like that. I wonder who it would be. You know, I didn't go through the chat and say hello to the people who were here. So let me let me get that done real quick because I was too busy complaining about the internet. <laughs> okay. You, you know. Well, I know Kaiwan's in there. Kaiwan is in here. So let me let me do this. Let me scroll all the way to the top. There's been a lot of chat so far. Uh, Cheryl's here. Chandra's here. Carolyn is here. Lola's mother is here. Hello, Lola. Lola's mom. Uh, Jeannie. Jeannie is here. Hello, Cindus. Cindus has joined us here on the 10th floor. Of course, we've got Chandra. I said Chandra already, right? Kaiwan. Hello, Kaiwan. Sandy. Liz. Oh, my goodness gracious. Just so many people here. Uh, keeping on going. Melissa is loud. Of course, Melissa is here. You cannot miss her. Leanne. Hello, Leanne. Oh, my <laughs> God. Oh, my God. Jacarius. Jacarius is here saying hello to everybody. Uh, his birthday is on Thursday. Well, happy birthday, Jacarius. Oh, my gosh, Jacarius. I'll be driving to L.A. on your birthday. Daisy's here. <laughs> Daisy suggests that Jocelyn is going to sing at Bobby's funeral. <laughs> That's funny. That is super funny, Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's the one that said the writing of the song was good, but Violet's voice wasn't great. But, you know, she's eight. You know, she's eight. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's it. If I, did, if I didn't catch you, say hello again. <laughs> um so drew ma drew mm -hmm. you know not not just drew let's talk about cameron matheson okay here's the thing he was just gone filming for lifetime or whatever yeah within the last six months right and that's why he was in jail mm -hmm. then he signs a, a deal with the great american family to do like mm -hmm. four of their movies or something and he's gone again already how long before Cameron Matheson decides he just doesn't have time? When his twin's back there and they don't need him and he can say, okay, I, 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 yeah. I choose to leave. Because um, cause I know like the, the thing came out and, and their big thing was this is not going to affect General Hospital. He's still going to stay on the show. He's still going to play Drew, all that kind of stuff. And that seems to be the case. But it's looking like it's going to be extreme part-time Drew. Yeah. And I mean, I work for a relationship with Carly because she's on a lot more yes carly's on so much more yes if he were paired with a different actress a different character that doesn't have so many episodes which laura wright has a ton of episodes so yeah and the and it, the, it does not make sense to leave carly the pining woman waiting for your return oh you can get by with that a couple of times with carly mm. but no that's not really very carly-esque so, and, and they would, and they could write it easily where Carly just messed it up for herself because, you know, Carly is very often her own worst enemy and she could be for this one too. You know, they could, she could, oh, like I said, his twin brother just needs to come out from the rubble. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Jason just needs to come back and stuff and, and that'll, that'll help. That'll help Kim and kind of, when it comes down to it, um, Carly is a diverse character with a lot of connections to the canvas, but she is more often than not connected to a Jason Porter, Main Morgan, Sonny Corinthos world. Jax, you know, she's really been in that corner, Jax, Sonny, Jason, for the majority of time. Whether or not she was with Alcazar or Jax or anything like that, it was still completely tied into Jason and Sonny and all of their movements and all that kind of Even stuff. Even when she was with Franco for a hot Right. Right. Um and that is what it is. You know, you can like it, you can hate it, you can lament it, you can say it's wrong, right? Whatever. You know, your opinion on this is what your opinion on it. But when it comes to the like momentum of the characters and what makes the most sense for her to be involved in, it's still that corner of stuff. Mm -hmm. Because that's where the most of her history is. Mm -hmm. You know? So, but I still just love her at Kelly's. Don't put her back on the metro court. I, I don't think so. Her. I think she's fine at Kelly's. I think that's a perfect move uh, for the character. Mm -hmm. I, 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 you know, it's it, it's still a restaurant setting. It's fine. Mm -hmm. 
it's fine it's fine uh, but you know it's just um i think that she's just going to continue to stay in that corner when jason comes back it's just it's going to be carly and jason again you know whatever it is the story that it is that they're going to tell i know people are excited to see if they can rekindle the romance i can see people who are unhappy with them even trying you know we'll just see we'll see where it goes i don't know you don't know we're not writing it <laughs> <laughs> Jason survived I the it. cave. I loved it this week too when she was talking about Brynn and that horrible person. But um, she was saying she was so much pride that the Kellys is there are three generations. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah, I don't think I don't I don't I don't see her leaving Kellys. I just mm -hmm. don't. I don't know. She can do both. She could do both. She can, yeah. yeah, she could just have a because it's not like Olivia isn't at the the Metro Court, so Olivia can run the court. And uh, Carly can run Kelly's and they could just be, you know, a part of her overarching, I don't know, Spencer restaurants. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see. Well, we'll see, you know, how long are they going to leave? Um, are, are they going to leave Metricourt, uh, Nina half owner? You know, as long as she stays half owner, more likely Carly's not going to be stepping back into the Metricourt. Right. And that's fine. They can retire the Metricourt set too at this point. I don't know though. Metricord is where you know that whole that whole uh, Jerry Jacks nonsense. I know, but that was so long ago now, though. That was so long ago, but the, I mean, the thing is, they've had you know three terrible, tragic accidents at the pool within three weeks of each other, too. So you know, maybe maybe the PCPD needs to do a little investigation on on the Metricord security, right? <laughs> Those bumbling bobbies—they mess it up, man uh daisy suggests that we are going to just wipe away everything that we've done over the last couple of years and put everybody back with who they used to be daisy suggests carly and jason drew and sam lulu and dante it's not quite quite exactly jason and sam but we you know drew and sam i don't know i don't know i don't know and even then i would say sam right now she's not too happy with drew you know she's taken off to australia exactly she tried to like manipulate and well not manipulate but but like not I'm manipulate i'm sticking my kid in private school then leaving yeah you don't have a choice this is what we're doing and then hey i'm high high telling it to australia I, I expect you to do what my what i asked what i planned well what drew get out of here <laughs> daisy wants to know if they close the metro court where will people stay they can still stay at the Metro Court. We just don't need to be in the Metro Court every other second of every episode. Mm -hmm. It's the only place people eat, really. Well, I, I like the Metro Court. I do. I like the Metro Court. I like the restaurant mostly of the, of the at the Metro Court, and and I, I you know, I don't want to see the uh, uh, the Savoy go anywhere either. I love the Savoy. You're right. Um, yeah, it's the Savoy the is great. Time. Um, a lot of the, a number of the actors, um, get annoyed with the Savoy because of how the tables are lit. Mm -hmm. And apparently that's kind of annoying. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Cause we, 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 when we visit the sound stages and see the sets, it's not production set up, you know, like right. they're there, but there's not, it's not completely laid out with props as if they're filming. It's not lit as if, you know, they were filming cause all of the main lights are on. It's not even the stage lights. So right. really, like the dimness of the scene with the brightness of the table underneath your face, I have no idea. No, we haven't seen that. Like. And like, for instance, we saw Sonny's uh, apartment with with uh, the statues. Yes. Well, they didn't have the lights on the way. So, you know, the cool um, silhouettes and shading that those um, statues yeah. cast, the one we're seeing it on the show. Mm -hmm. Well, we didn't see that. No, no, no. And there seems to be kind of two setups for Sonny's penthouse apartment as well. Uh, when it comes to that little alcove with the statue, they have two versions of that. They've got the a little one, which is kind of normal, and then they've got like a bigger one for scenes. But mm -hmm. the bigger one is styled different than the little one, and so it's kind of obvious when they're using which set. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. that's cool. But, you know, there's just options and movements there. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, Metricore can stick around. I'm just being cagey, just being crappy for the sake of putting words in a podcast. I don't hate the Metricore at all. It is not very safe, though. Uh, when it comes to Lulu and Dante, I would prefer to not. Like when Lulu wakes no. up. I think maybe eventually. I really, really like the pairing of Dante and Sam. I love um, the, it seems like, um, you know, they're just such great scene partners. I think uh, they're, you know, Dom and Kelly are great scene partners. And, you know, they're really, 
they're really they seem so natural on television now now they are they are heading into too much happiness because what <laughs> happens when a couple is too happy in our soap opera Tragedy. they become a little bit they become a little bit mundane yeah not yeah. enough tragedy not enough emotion mm -mm. No. Just too much happiness. Just too much happiness. <laughs> well, what's what's interesting to watch when they're happy and not arguing with each other, and that's the truth. It is the truth. It that's is the truth. Okay. You know, uh, Molly and TJ super happy for a super long time. We were even very happy. We're still happy and together during the beginning of the surrogacy thing, and that is starting to break apart and crumble a little bit. I don't think TJ is sold on Christina as much as it may seem. No, because I think he jumped on board awfully fast, didn't he? I think that he felt very pressured by the both of them to say yes. Mm -hmm. Because what's he going to do? He He's the... He, it's interesting. It's an interesting statement I'm about to make. But he's the one that is going to be responsible for making it happen. You know? Like, it's, it's going to be him giving the juice, you know? <laughs> and if he doesn't give the juice, there's no baby. So, yeah, yeah like... Oh. 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 It's gonna be interesting to see. It's how gonna that be interesting, I, but it's so funny because cool. I didn't, I didn't expect the angst to be from TJ in the story. I expected it to continue to be between Christina and Molly, but that seems to have been resolved. Well, they pumped the brakes on that, didn't they? You can't figure out who you're gonna have play the character. You can't continue with the drama. You know, like I get it. Yeah, I mean, it seems like Cena was seen testing people for weeks. <laughs> uh, Kaiwan says, TJ is always pouring down to Molly. I don't know what pouring down is. Somebody help me out with that. Um, even when Molly cheated on him, he was saying, uh, coward down by, I hate that as a black I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what you mean, Kaiwan. Uh, I would love to understand that a little bit better if maybe chat can help me decode that one. Um I think Sam will get pregnant, hence the remodel to build another room in nursery. I don't know. Sam, Sam, ready for another baby? You think she needs another baby? Well, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how she feels about it as as her character. I really feels better, but I know, like for instance, for right, like uh, Carly never needs to be pregnant again. <laughs> Isn't it time for her not to be pregnant again? Even Maurice Bernard said, "Sunny doesn't need more kids." <laughs> like so, so somebody on twitter was like oh man I, I really hope that adam turns out to be sunny's kid and then mm -hmm. maurice bernard saw that retweeted and said i don't think sunny needs more kids i mean a lot of kids you know <laughs> no i need a lot of kids oh gotcha 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 okay so uh, chandra uh, helped with a uh, kaiwan here Mm -hmm. um yeah, suggested that tj needs to be stronger in this situation he showed a level of toughness that he's like presented to like ava and mason and stuff that he didn't mm -hmm. access in this he didn't express his needs like he does in other dynamics mm -hmm. in his okay 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 yeah yeah so he was he you're right he was a lot more assertive than those others with those others yeah and uh just a lot more vocal about how he really felt mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and so this it was a little more clearly trying to make christy or I molly he, happy he's trying to make more molly happy than anybody yeah yeah just and like, i think i it. think he you know right now he's maybe maybe he's being a little too going along with things mm -hmm. uh, because i think he sees the fragileness of molly how fragile yeah. Molly is yeah. so right I, I just I, I still don't know how this is going to pan out i really don't know what to expect from this particular story uh but i'm happy there's movement on it now that's what i can say I, you know, if it were me, if I were where I, where I was starting a relationship, like Christina is starting a relationship right now with Blake. That's going to be a problem, too. I, this is something I ought to have said something to her first. Hey, you know what? My, you know, my sister would really love for me to be a surrogate. That means I'm going to have to, you know, my next 9 to 12 months is going to be very different. We're going to date and have a great time for about six months. And then from like month seven, eight, and nine, you're not, we're not going to, it's not going to, it's going to be weird for us to, um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even, even, you know, even in real life, it'd be pregnant myself. Your dad, you know, like month seven, eight, 
he was like, okay, that's the baby's house now. I don't belong in there. <laughs> right. <laughs> So, so I, I don't know. It will it probably will cause uh, tension between Blaze and Christina, which is good. We need drama. We need we need we need, we need fighting. We need disagreements. It's, mm -hmm. It is a soap opera. That's what we expect. Not everybody to be happy. Um, we got Blaze and Christina definitely moving forward with their relationship. They smooch or doodled. Mm -hmm. They had a conversation about what Blaze's real name is, and she is not Lila Ray Quartermain. No, not unless she's changed her name or she was adopted or some nonsense no i mean maybe i mean uh, sure but i don't think that lila ray got adopted i think that a she's still times, I, I think a lot of times it, it, as an audience we spin story in our own minds mm -hmm. and we convince ourselves yeah. that it's going to be what we are spinning or writing within our own right mind. and but the trick is if it's not what you think it is home. if you not if it doesn't do what you think it is if it if it doesn't go in the in the direction that you hope for mm -hmm still find a way to like it <laughs> you know because it, it's human nature you're always going to prefer your you're always going to think that your own story beats are better than what actually happens because you're writing for yourself in your head you are going to give you what you want to see absolutely so it's yeah, really really easy story in your head that okay let me think about what i don't want to happen and then go with it no for the, how many weeks in a row have I been saying, come on, Cyrus, start working for the site? He's not. Mm -hmm. He's as evil as the day he started. He is. And is still a master manipulator. A master. He's still, yeah, he's still at the top of his manipulation game. I yes, would have is. preferred a different story. I wrote a different story in my head. I wrote a completely different story in my head that I would prefer to see. But that doesn't mean that I can't connect with and enjoy what it is that I am actually getting. I I think for I really wanted I really wanted for a while for for Cyrus to be you know redeemed in some way. Yeah, and I really think there's just a couple of scenes with Jeannie Francis that maybe want that. Yes, yeah, the power of a great pairing, right? Mm -hmm. And even then, even the scenes that we got from them this week, even though people are like, "Oh, Laura, don't be dumb." She mm -hmm. sees the best in, hopes for the best in, forgave mm -hmm. him, and can. And when it comes down to it, I feel as though Cyrus is the most honest with Laura than anybody on mm -hmm. this show. Where mm -hmm. he's like, "Listen, I've done all these things, but I uh, what what's what's important to me is is having somebody in my family to love me. Mm -hmm. I want somebody who shares my blood to love me. Right? Please. I was." I was really, I was kind of surprised when Laura doubled back and went back to the restaurant. You know, Cyrus kind of told her off a little bit. I didn't think he was going to do that. I thought he was going to be more, more like, oh, you, you came back. Mm -hmm. I thought he was just going to be more, you know, grateful that she came back and maybe seeing a window that of, of oh, maybe my relationship with my sister is not dead. Maybe it can turn around. Maybe I can have that real baby sister. Mm -hmm. Maybe. But he kind of told him. He's also very hurt. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's not making good choices and stuff. Uh, Chandra reminds us we haven't gotten off of the elevator. See, look, look at it. the <laughs> role play that we do, the fantasy that I have taught uh, the audience to enjoy must be adhered to and, on and honored. I'm so sorry, you guys. We've been stuck in that elevator for so long. Someone's damn has had to pass gas by now, and we're all stuck in there. <laughs> oh, look, the emergency stop was activated. And when Jordan <laughs> did that again, let me push that button again. Hey, everybody, welcome to the 10th floor. Get out of that waiting room. <laughs> climb onto this elevator. We're going all the way up to the top, up onto the 10th floor. You get out of the elevator. You look to the left. You can see on the benches there uh, nothing that I can recall. <laughs> look to the right. You can see the nurse's station, and people are at work. Challenge I think fine. we were just too excited about the Emmys. We forgot I was to so get excited up. about the Emmys, and I was too ready to tell people that they're dumb on the internet. So, <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> what can I, say? <laughs> uh, I think Ava will hook up with him. Ooh, who's him? Cyrus? Oh, gosh, I hope not. Uh, Blaze could be lying. I don't see why she would be. Um, and here's the thing. So, there, there's another reaction that I saw um, on the social medias when it comes to um, Blaze being worried about coming out. In a public setting and how it can affect her career. And there are people out there like Melissa Etheridge. Like, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. What do you mean it's going to be a problem? 
What do you mean? What do you well, mean? I completely understand. I, I completely understand that storyline with Blaze. When I, when she it's said not about her fans, started, it's about her family. Yeah. I, but when it comes to true to life, oh yes, that would very easily happen with Blaze and her family. You know, and the history of her family and the and how she described them and stuff. Huh? When she first said that, when she first said that you know somebody might not you know approve or whatever and christina kind of jumped on the bandwagon of society yeah and not at a personal level right the first thing i said was abuela abuela's got a problem and that's exactly what it turned out to be yeah yeah that's exactly what they turned what it turned out to be so i uh i think that people might be a little quick to um like watch half of a scene come up with something and then pay less attention to the rest of the scene after they have drawn their conclusion because if you take the scene as whole or the scenes as whole the conversation as a whole you would know that she's not talking about being worried about necessarily her fame or her acceptance being majorly affected minorly because it would minorly yeah but majorly not not necessarily the public opinion it's her family's opinion and yes she's not her ready for family's that family's opinion and then she mentioned the cousin too and I just couldn't, you know, of course I had Disney. Can't be talking about Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody talks about Bruno, Mom. Nobody talks about Bruno. Nobody that's talks about Bruno. Bruno. That's the first thing I thought of when she started talking about the guy. Well, oh, mother. <laughs> oh, Mom. Oh, other people thought of it too, for sure. Oh, but I, I think know. that it's, <laughs> I think it's very, uh, I think it's a storyline that is, is, is well depicted and very commonplace. And who's opening up an, uh, a, a youth home to help people who are facing similar things? And what better than a celebrity endorsement? Mm -hmm. That's what we're getting, folks. That's what we're getting. That's this is going getting. to be um, Christina, because she's got a foundation helping people. Now, Blaze is not age-appropriate to live in the home. She's not exactly who Christina is targeting when it comes to the help. But that doesn't mean that the activities that Christina is doing in this world will not be inspiring to Blaze. Now, I I would think too, I would think that in in her um in the in her LBGT well I would think that Adam would be accepted there as well. You don't have to be a part of that community to to, to need some assistance, right? That's what the plus so, is. But yeah, that's what the plus is. So <laughs> It would be great. I think that's where Adam should go. Uh, yeah, really. Do, yeah, uh, maybe. Yeah, you know, maybe there is an aspect of Adam work, that also work can be Adam explored. into into Christina's um, um, charity home. The thing is, too, like Adam could also be as gay as the day is long. He just hasn't had a chance to express that because he's and so, he could. so he, like he, people he, have so quickly like attached romance, which is understandable. It's a soap. It's a I get it, but I haven't gotten any romance from Adam's performance. This isn't I love Jocelyn and I want to make out with her. No, 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 no. The very, very, very first time we saw the character when he was like, oh, I saw your boobs. Yeah. Uh, but that was completely different, though. You know, when they brought him back as a character, they they have they reimagined. Uh, yeah. Adam's yeah. Character. At first he was like, I saw your thing. Yeah. I saw I saw I saw Cameron's pecker. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, don't, they don't ever talk about that. They only talk about Jocelyn's boobage. They never, never, ever, ever talk about the fact that everybody has seen Cameron's wing doodle. Not just seen it, but seen it in a particular state. Mm -hmm. Which is different than the other state. Yeah. The better state. The more impressive state. The state you really want to see. The other one's kind of floppy. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> in any case, uh, yeah, they totally reimagined Adam. He came in, he was, yeah. I like your boobs. And then the second time we saw him, he apologized for liking her boobs. Yep. And then now now he's riddled. Riddled with Ritalin. Ah. Uh, Joshua Bernard, you see the 10th floor next week, hon. Please stop. <laughs> we want to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, of course. We want to talk to everybody. You talk to James. You can talk to us. <laughs> you can talk to us. <laughs> uh, Adam Cubby bisexual. Maybe. He could be bisexual. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Who cares? I care yeah. slightly, but um, but it does make sense. It does make sense, though, for him to be able to get some help. Yeah, he needs a little halfway house. Yes, 
Yes. Get away from the family. Get away from the parents. Uh, yeah, maybe Jocelyn will be able. Hopefully, Jocelyn. I mean, and I that. felt so, and I felt I felt bad for Adam too because he calls with this good news, and his dad just berates him anyway. Yeah, I know, right? Just berates him anyway. Yeah, it's not a good setup. Why are you ta- Why did you have to retake it? And why did you have to take the? Why, why did you have a makeup exam? He, this they have shown us that this man, of course, they haven't shown him or anything about his character yet, other than he's on the phone being a turd. Um, uh, but this poor kid, he can't do anything right. Mm-mm. No. In the, in the eyes of his father, maybe uh, his other family, we don't know. Uh, but in the eyes of his father, he cannot possibly please him. Now, he's too young right now and 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 too and too um and needs the support that mm-hmm. actual physical support but there i see a day coming where young adam his father's approval is not going to be important to him anymore it'll be a bonus if he gets it but he won't care hey dad look at me think back and talk to me did i grow up according to plan Mm-hmm. Do you think I'm wasting my time doing things I want to do? But it hurts when you disapprove all along. The song, Ma. Well, is it okay? What song is it, Matt? It's, it's, it's by it Simple Plan. Okay, so I song didn't know. Simple I, Plan. I, it I think it's called Perfect. I thought maybe Matthew was just coming up off, off top. I don't, I don't write songs like that. I'm not Wayne Brady. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne Brady, we see that fool on Friday. We will. He'll walk down the red carpet. He will. He will. Adam doesn't even have to tell his father his grades. I'm sure dad will be paying his tuition. Pay, we'll stop paying his tuition. It's payback. But help was there for Adam. Uh, Chandra has said that she's worked in higher education um, for many, many, many years. And Adam's situation is not rare. When it comes to just extreme parental pressure in higher education to achieve a particular status from the school that you're going to is not uncommon. Yeah. So, bummer. bummer. I, just, bummer. I, think, I think about it, though. Okay, if you're going to be that kind of overbearing parent, okay, you better look at yourself. Why is your kid at PCPD? Not PCPD, that's a police yeah, department. PCU? Uh, <laughs> PC, why are they at PCU? Why haven't you made sure they were somewhere else? Stanford. If you're Right? Oxnard. Why aren't you somewhere else? Why are, why are you there? <laughs> so perhaps the person that let him down first was Dad. Yeah, yeah. I uh, asked Corey Laughlin about how to get your kid into college. Just stick him in a canoe with some photos. It's fine. They'll figure it out. <laughs> uh, Cinda <laughs> says, you're right, Cat. This is a sign of a young adult becoming their own person. This is this is his battle. This is his internal battle. Right now, he is he is he knows that he doesn't want this. Right. He knows that he doesn't want this. Mm-hmm. But but he also, he, in his very young age, he wants the approval of his father so badly. He's probably been fighting for it his entire life. He probably has been fighting. You know, even as a younger a younger kid, he was probably felt felt like he was battling for love, and he still is. Hmm. Mm-hmm. He's the classic case of, Dad, you're on your deathbed. Can you just say it once? Yes. You know? What do the people want? That these this is the two things that people want to hear from their parents if they've had some kind of trauma in their past. They either want, "I'm proud of you," or "I love you," or "I'm sorry." One of them. One of them. One of them. One of them. Oh, let's see. Uh, PCU appears to be Ivy League, says Daisy. And Chandra says they're trying to be Daisy, but they're not even close. <laughs> <laughs> um, it might be one of the finer schools in New York. Mm-hmm. But I don't know about Ivy League. Mm-hmm. But it, it's a good school. PCU is a, a good, good school. school. Evidently, they got pre-med. Yeah, yeah. Because that's what Adam and Joss are in, right? Right, right. That's why they're in classes together. I think it was a pre-med class that he was freaking out under and had to go to the hospital for. Yeah. Well, 
So yeah, so that there, I think yeah. Josh, I think Josh was doing a great job. I think he's hitting it out of the park. I mean, I he's very believable to me. Yeah, he is. Uh, you know, and I and I love the fact that he seems to be really taking it seriously. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's he's taking the yeah he's taking the success seriously a little too seriously, and yeah, he's gonna he's gonna have to get off the 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 oxycontin or whatever it is, mm -hmm. oxymen oxymamphetamine or whatever it's called, dextro yes. dextroamphetamine. I think it is any whatever he needs to get off the, yeah. you know, the medicine that's not been really prescribed to him mm -hmm. um jocelyn needs help uh, uh melissa suggested in chat that since you know he's gay now in our eyes um that he <laughs> he's gonna start giving dex the eyeballs <laughs> reason why i'm always around with dex is jocelyn is because i like looking I at him has dex dex has been on the show for a year now hadn't he oh yeah he came around well, just time... after jason left They've got to, they've got to give Dex a, a different identity, you know, like some secrets, or a family member, or something. So, so really, the only thing that Dex has had for him is the fact that he's with Jocelyn at this point. Like all of the development and attention that he had gotten has stopped. Yeah, and yeah, and his and his all his all his stuff uh with sunny has kind of stopped too it slowed way down it's it's it clearly in my mind clearly jason's coming back and so they just stopped focusing on dex which is unfortunate uh because i think that there is there is more to dex and i think evan hoffer is is, is bringing it when it comes to performance just fine mm -hmm. you know um i think that there's there's room for them to do stuff with him uh giving him a parent will help greatly Mm -hmm. And if we're going to be doing Jason and his kids storyline, then it's entirely possible they can fold Dex into that it's one of Jason's long lost eldest children. Yes. Who yes. the mama is? I don't know. I don't care. They could easily. They could easily. Because it's not like, because he, like, I don't know how old he's supposed to be or how old Jason's supposed to be and all that kind of stuff, but he doesn't remember anything before he bashed his head. And he mm -hmm. bashed his head in college, right? Yeah. Was it college uh, or high school? Jason, Remind us, Chad. Jason bashed his head like in 1995. Yeah, I, just, I don't know how old the character was supposed to. I don't think it was teenage it was Jason, though, right? years ago. It was adult Jason, right? It was college Jason. College Jason, I believe. So Jason's supposed to be in his 50s. Right, so if college Jason bashed his head, he could have had a whole high school romance with somebody that resulted in a baby that he simply doesn't remember. He could. Because he don't know nothing. There we go. Sean just says college. Perfect. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. It's it, it works. It totally works. And Jason went to college for a, quite a while and he was supposed to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. And then he bashed his and head. And then he bashed his head. So yeah, man. Totally. Totally. Jason was in med school when he had his accident, says Melissa. So there you go. Um, I think that that's plenty, plenty of opportunity for them to say, oh yeah. Oh, you just don't know because you can't remember it. I tell you, you guys. I would be shocked if Steve Burton don't come. I'll be shocked because if you if you watch him if you watch some other stuff, you watch it like you watch those two on their podcast, they don't talk about beats and days of our lives at all. No, they just talk about GH, right? They talk about GH for the most part. But they yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cinda says they can all, always retcon anything, which is absolutely the case. And soaps are classic for that. They they invented absolutely. retcon. Okay. They invented the rewrite. They invented the recast. You know? Mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> so, how could they not? You can't be on television for 63 years and not recast people. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. He well, wore Cosby show sweaters before the pre-accident. <laughs> pre yes! They make fun of that. Uh, Steve and Bradford love to make fun of the sweaters. Oh, big they time. They do. They do. Jason left Port Charles after finding Carly with Sonny. Oh, he did. And also, also... If you look over there at, at their content, they've had now um, three people on from General Hospital. They had nobody from Days on their show. Not one. No, it's all GH stuff. He's coming back. Just give it time. Yeah. Give it time. Just to show up. They're not even going to announce it. He's just going to walk into the room. Hey, Jesus, where you been? <laughs> yeah, bang my head. I'm fine. <laughs> Where's Brett? <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> Heather Weather killed her. <laughs> Heather, what, you, did you get the the Liesel name the Liesel name drop of this week? 
Yeah. That was nice, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, James is in. Yeah, James. At least we got James. It's fine. Oh, shoot. I forgot <laughs> to look at my phone. Maxie, her life is falling apart. She needs a man or something. I don't know what, I don't know what she needs. A personal assistant? What, what, what are we leading up with Maxie here? She got too much money. She too busy to pay attention to her phone, to take care of her kids. Clearly, something's going on. Is, does that mean Cody is going to move in to help? Uncle Cody? Like Joey from, from Full House? Maybe. See that happening, actually. Especially, especially if they reveal in the next couple of weeks that that's kind of her brother now. Yeah, right? Right? Mm -hmm. Um, 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 <laughs> Melissa's suggesting we got another new Molly. Oh, goodness. We don't have another new Molly. But if it is, it's going to be uh, Cheatwood. Max Cheatwood. I, I like this Molly. Molly, leave the Mollies alone. Uh, the reason I said it is because uh, he was he was he was there. He was at the set for some reason. Like not, I don't think he was there filming anything. I think he was mm -hmm. just passing through because he was in town yeah. or something. And he mm -hmm. took a picture next to the GH sign and stuff. And people were like, "What?" Uh, but that's the only reason I mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> Maxie needs an adventure. Is Scotty and Lucy gonna start doing it because Lucy stopped paying attention to Marty? I hope not. Was a weird scene. Why did it was kind it? of cool. well? This is why I think they had that scene because of what's going to happen with Bobby next week. Yeah, and they're just reminding of the history between the old legendary characters. Yes. So yeah, I guess let's. Okay, well, let's talk about it, Ma. Tracy's back. She left mm -hmm. Bobby over there. Because yeah, Luke's affairs were so deep. It mm -hmm. required more attention. She misses him so much. Cries while yes. she's looking at a photo. Mm -hmm. But Bobby ain't coming home. No. And I'm just so scared of what they're going to do. Mm. In what like, way? Because, okay, it's because, like, okay, so I don't know these people. I have never met Jackie Zeman. I have never met Frank Valentini. I have never met Chris and Dan, who are the head writers of GH. I don't know these people. I don't know the relationship that they had. I don't know what their plans are or anything like that. So I can see them definitely trying to honor the F out of Jackie Zeman. As they should, yeah. But Jackie Zeman is a soap actress who has been on a soap opera for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So do you go the very, oh no, she just went in her sleep. We miss her so much because of diabetes or whatever ailment that they've given Bobby. Mm -hmm. Or do they do something incredibly soapy? Like have her have an accident or like something? Like have her have an accident, have her killed something, you know? Over on the I other show, over on the other show, on Days of yeah. Our Lives, we had two classic characters that passed away. Like, I guess, I guess recently with the winning each other or whatever. I don't know how long Stefano passed away. You know, but, it, but like the, regardless, well, at least, <laughs> at least Victor passed, you know, when Victor passed away, <laughs> they went the soapy route. He didn't just pass away in his sleep. And people were really unhappy about that. Mm. That his death led to story. Okay. I think they're probably <laughs> going to write bobby's death writing into story i really do i do i do and i'm not too mad about it and it depends on how well they do it you know uh but i could see them having some kind of twist like bobby had an accident as well in amsterdam just like luke right you know you know right, yeah. right. and just and Maybe i'm just, I'm just i don't want to say scared but I'm, ner I, I'm 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 nervous i'm anxious i have anxious energy over it because I, I don't know what it's going to be. And I want it to be great. I want it to be great too. You know. And maybe it wasn't Uncle Victor that was the demise of Luke. He just, you know, we, we always speculated that Victor was working under somebody. And maybe it was Brennan. And I, and I still, and I still, and I know it may just turn out this way. And that's okay. But I don't really want to see that's how Anthony Geary will never, Tony Geary's never going to be on, it, all my, on, on General Hospital again. I, I don't, I really doesn't like... I don't know. He's willing to take pictures with people. 
Mm-hmm. Somebody go like somebody went over to Amsterdam um, recently. Somebody who worked with him for a long time and visited him, and they took a picture, mm-hmm. and he looked so uninterested in taking that photo, mm-hmm. but he did. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Well, right now on the show, Luke Spencer is passed, so there will be no reason for him to show up for Bobby's funeral. No, 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 no. Um, but you know, if we can get uh, lookalikes or something, or at least if we can get Tony there with a redheaded lookalike to shoot, for, shoot from behind or something, uh, even if this is like all conclusive, Luke Spencer's dead because we have seen him walk somebody into the afterlife. I'm, I'm okay with that. I just I don't know what Anthony Geary's interested in doing. Um, from my understanding, from things that I have seen, he is as retired as somebody can be. Yeah, and he's quite an older gentleman now, too. Yeah. You know, maybe he's done with all that. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just... Uh... I know. What I do know, though, go, with all this, I know Jane, El- uh, Jane Elliott is just going to be so good. I know she is. Mm-hmm. Uh, Daisy says maybe they'll give her... Uh, they might give her a peaceful passing because of how she died. Daisy, do you know how she passed away? Because it was quick and simple. It was. Not a lot of suffering at all. At all. She did yeah, what it, was... it is that actually we're talking about. Just didn't wake up. I thought, didn't Jackie have cancer? She, yeah, but it was quick and but painless. It, it was pretty fast. It was pretty fast. It was kind of like... I don't, like I don't know own. what has officially been said by the family. So I, I don't know what I can say on this live microphone. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was quick and easy. She just didn't wake up one day. Yeah. 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 And you know, it's not uncommon for someone to find out that they have cancer and it's already so progressed. And then they, and then they, when they do find out about it, they're gone in just a matter of a week. Yeah. It's all yeah. the time. Yeah. Happens a lot. Happens a lot. Happens a lot. So we'll happens see. I mean, if it, the exact same the thing show. could happen to Bobby Spencer. Yes. The exact same thing could happen. Yeah. Who knows? I don't know. I'm just, they, I just have anxious. You know, anxious. An, an easy, an easy, quick one, you know, enough with no suffering thing they can do uh, is, in a, is an aneurysm. Mm-hmm. Quick, fast, fast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, goodness gracious. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of speculation in the chat, but you know, we don't know until they, they do it, what it is that yeah. that's going to be done. I know, I know everybody's going to do such a good job because so much of what they're, um, what, so what, you, so much of what the, the, the grief they're going to be trying to convey on screen is going to be real. So much of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Melissa's too sad to continue to talk about it. And she's making a demand as she always does. She thinks she runs the show. It's like my sister. Well, it's like my sister, <laughs> Melissa. Just just walking into a room and just being like, this is what's happening now. Yeah. Well, now that Melissa, I'm here, this is what's going on. doing that. Comes in, oh, great. Um, so I got these streamers. I need you to put them up. What? <laughs> 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 Melissa really, Melissa suggests that we stop being sad sacks. These are not her words. These are mine. <laughs> um, stop being sad sacks and then and, and wondering how a, a real life dead actor is going to have their character killed off. And um, she wants us to talk about Finn. Hmm. What about him? <laughs> I don't know. I like. Um, <laughs> I do like Finn, and with you know, I like I've said before, this this re go back to Finn and Liz. I like it a lot. It's, it's good. It's fine. It's great. It's 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 that love that people are looking for. It has it yeah. has romance. It has it yeah. has drama. It has support. It has those steamy shower scenes. It has everything that people want on a soap. They just don't like. And Finn. I loved I loved the, the Chase family and Liz there and and uh, and JoJo's um <laughs> the the Christmas tree that you know kind of wonky. It's tough. Was kind of like <laughs> uh, Sabrina. Hi, Sabrina. Sabrina says that the old writers need to write what happened to the Bobby. Last thing, last thing on the whole Bobby thing, and I think that's why it's taken so long for us to get there is because they want the writers, the old writers, to do it. Um, because it's been months and months and months and months and months and months. Sure. Anyway, enough of that though. Uh, Finn, Finn's fine. Finn, Finn, if Finn. If, so, folks, um, you, you, you take to Finn exactly the way that the show wants you to take to Finn. 
he like this whole this whole malpractice thing is based around the fact that he is not a likable man. Right. And they have shown that over and over again. Uh, when it comes to like just society, he doesn't know how to to connect people not really and, and and really does feed into you know how my, my 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 big criticism for finn is always how he's he's this lost little 17 year old he just doesn't know how to love right <clears throat> it's because he's like socially inept yes he he's one of those like smart guys that doesn't know how to have friends yes and there's lots and lots and lots of people like that we should so be many. considered ourselves lucky that he takes a shower on a regular basis right <laughs> <laughs> right oh. um i like their i like their family scene um i loved i loved him with a <clears throat> getting a little taste of what it might be like with killer miller with alexis because alexis knows exactly what diane would do no one would know better than alexis of what i diane know right do. And Diane being on the opposing side of this took me by surprise. I didn't expect that. Yeah. I didn't expect her to be a part of the prosecution. Yeah. But she has to be because she's been on retainer with that family forever. Who is this family? I don't know. We're going to find out. Huh? Oh, goodness. I don't, I don't, I don't understand how yet. How can they afford Diane? She's expensive. Hmm. It's a favor from Uncle Sonny to Brooklyn. No, no, no. Wrong family. Wrong family. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> well, but they haven't told us. Maybe they are super affluent. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe they got lots maybe of books. The character who died is 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 Ted King. And <laughs> and I, I think that we'll see uh, we'll see Alexis become a lawyer again. I think this really got her lawyer juices a pumping. That's what people were doing saying. That little mock trial. That's what people were saying. And we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Because I know that it was Nancy Lee Grown that was the one that was like, I don't really want to do the court thing anymore. And they said, okay, no problem. We'll, we'll write the character in a different direction. Mm -hmm. What? Somebody asked for something on the show and got it? How uncommon. Oh, my God. That never. It happens all the time. <laughs> Even James yeah. Law Jr. was like, if the audience knew half, half, half of what these people have worked into their deals, they would melt into piles of puddle of uh, pudding. Mm -hmm. My words, not his. Anyway. <laughs> Finn is sexy, says Cheryl. <laughs> he does kind of have a little way about him sometimes, though, doesn't he? He's just so inoffensive. So guess what, Matt? What's that? I got five minutes. Oh, I guess we got to go. Well, oh, 40. You got to leave in five minutes? I probably should leave in the next 10, yeah. Oh, my God. All right. Well, you got to go shopping for I'm the I'm supposed animals. to be in Modesto at 115. All right, let's get out of here. All right, thanks everybody for joining us here on the 10th floor. We got to go Emmy shopping. Uh, but that's it. Finn's fine. Finn and Elizabeth are great. Um, Violet's not terrible. Um, Amanda Sutton can keep her shirt on. The Quartermains are going to war, but we can get into that later. Um, mm -hmm. really not oh, terrible. oh, one, one, one more quick thing. As one more looked. thing because I did enjoy it so much. Oh, man. They could have a whole episode of Vivi and Lolo, and I'd be so happy. They are so good. Actually, um, I think Melissa or somebody or somebody in there in the chat said that they would take a um, spinoff. Of I would take, oh, me too. Oh, my gosh. I love the Viv the Vivi and Lolo show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we got we to gotta hold on. We got to hold, hold into it. Uh, we, we'll, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Uh, for some reason, two hours is still never enough to cover everything that we want to talk about in General Hospital. Isn't that crazy? Right. <laughs> anyway, uh, we got to do Emmy stuff. Uh, if not, we would still talk. Uh, <laughs> yes, Austin is still dead. BOQ and Chase are getting married. Uh, Marshall and Irene had a fun little thing. Like, there was a lot of stuff that we didn't get a chance to talk about because we're too busy just jibber jabbing about other stuff. Mm -hmm. But whatever. Pay attention to Twitter. We'll see how much I decide to do that. Um, Ashford's yeah. a great Christmas shopping is wonderful. Esme is out of there. Um, We'll see you next week. Get onto that elevator. We're going to go back down to the first floor. Get into our cars because we're going to go shopping. So we're going to hit that Rodeo Drive. Port Charles style. <laughs> With our radio studio. I'm going to Rodeo Drive. Central <laughs> Valley, California style. And the poorest county in the whole state. <laughs> 
return your radios to previous episodes of the tenth floor, which you can find on all of your favorite podcasting platforms. If you can't find it on your favorite podcasting platform, reach out to us on Twitter at tenth floor gh, and that will send you in the right direction. Uh, in the meantime, like and subscribe the, to the videos, leave uh, super chats, leave donations. Thank you very much to uh, somebody. I think I'm got to do it live here. Sorry, mom. <laughs> Thank you to the person who gave us a $5 tip on the Buy Me a Coffee website. Rochelle. Rochelle. Thank you, Rochelle, for doing that. Um, and, uh, yeah, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, here, live, subscribe, leave a comment if you didn't watch live. Um, if you didn't watch live, reload and leave a comment to help the algorithm. That's it. I've been Matt. I've been Kat. And we'll catch you next time right here on the 10th floor. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.